because y'all brought a bunch of mess in here this morning. Hallelujah. You got to know, you got to leave that at the door. Amen. He said, when you enter into his place, you enter it with joy in your heart and with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. No matter what you're going through, when you come into his presence and when you come into his house, amen, you leave that outside amen and we hope that whatever you get when you're in his presence and in his house when you leave out you will tell that thing that you left outside what to do amen, amen. glory to God we got to understand that we are king's kids no matter what situation that we are going through we don't let that situation come and overwhelm us and change our atmosphere but we stay on top to make sure that we change the atmosphere of that thing amen Apostle T teaches us all the time that those elements are always speaking very very loud to us your situation your trial your finances your debt is always speaking very loud to you, amen? But you need to begin to open up your mouth and begin to speak louder. That's what he tells us to open up your mouth and to declare the decree that the Lord said unto you. We have to begin to speak louder than what that thing is speaking to us, amen? Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory this morning. We give you praise and honor this morning, Father. We declare that your glory shall be revealed in this place through the word that you shall release, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, have your way in this sanctuary, in the hearts of your people today. You know what those in this room need. You know what we need today. You release it. I am the chosen vessel for this hour. And I thank you, Holy Ghost, for what you're going to download to us, God, that's going to cause us to move from the next level of glory. Hallelujah. That you have already prepared for us. So we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this meeting time. Because we will not miss the visitation that we shall get from you this day. Come on again. Give him glory in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about give me glory. I'm talking about give the King of kings and the Lord of lords glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Act like you believe him. Act like you trust him. Act like you got faith in him. No matter what your situation looks like, huh? Sometimes you got to give him a yet praise. In other words, that is an although act like, huh? Because you trust that he is going to bring you through. Matter of fact, that he's already bring you through. You just got to go through the process. Amen? You got to go through whatever that area that you are striving through. Yes, I said striving. We should not be striving through anything. Amen? We should be walking by faith. Hallelujah? Because that's how a righteous walk. Amen? You may be seated this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm believing after this message today that your attitude, your posture will be shifted. It will be changed. And I'm really uh, appalled, actually. Yes, I'm on Facebook Live. I'm really appalled of the, of the aroma that is in this place this morning because of the word that we are getting in this house. Amen. Especially at our 11 o'clock time. We know that our apostle gives us so much meat on the bone. Amen. Have you ever gone to the fair? Have you gotten that turkey leg? Huh? My daughter always goes to the fair, and the only thing she goes for is to get that smoked turkey leg because it has a lot of meat on the bone. Amen? And that is the word that we get in this house. So it doesn't matter what your life is saying to you right now. Amen? That is not what it's going to continue to be. But it's, it behooves you, and it's dependent on your attitude and your posture, how you are going through the season that you are in yeah. hallelujah it really really depends on that and I thank God right now for your posture and attitude in this place this morning because that proves to me that what Holy Ghost has been ministering to me to make sure I stay in that vein and what Holy Spirit has been ministering through our apostle amen to make sure I stay in that vein amen yeah. glory to God come on and give our apostle a hand right now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor him this morning, my husband. Thank him for this opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are we going to go to Genesis? Genesis. Genesis. We're going to go to Genesis 37. Holy Ghost, have your way. 
have your way. Genesis 37. We're going to talk about strength today. Strength today. And I don't believe you know the strength that you have on the inside of you. There's a strength of faith that is on the inside of you that no matter what you are going through, you need to pull on that thing. Amen? You need to draw from the well that's on the inside of you. We were told last week that there's a well springing up in your belly. There's a sound that's in your belly. And as it looked like this Sunday, you have not been releasing that sound that Apostle T prophesied to us that says it's in our belly. Amen? And that well that's in your belly is a well that springs over, and it springs over with life. It springs over with prosperity. It springs over with goodness, healing, that soteria, that salvation that we so have when Jesus died on the cross for us. Amen? Salvation. Once we begin, we became saved and accepted him as our Lord in Jesus Christ. Amen? And then one thing our elder Caroline tells us to enjoy for your salvation. Hallelujah. We need to learn to enjoy our salvation because no matter where we are right now, salvation is always going to win. Salvation is always going to conquer and overcome and be on top. You just got to work it. You just got to believe that your salvation is getting the victory. Amen. Because that's a part of salvation, victory, deliverance, wholeness, welfare. Hallelujah. And stop letting the, the, the outward realm rule how you, how you walk in this life, especially as a Christian. The word says we have to walk by what? And not by sight. And we get derailed because we let our sight derail us and cause us to pay more attention of what we see. But we are faith people. We don't walk by what they see. What I see does not matter. It does not matter because that's only temporary. But the word that I'm getting from God and the word that is in his word that Holy Spirit is given to me, that's what's going to win. And that's the thing we got to keep on the forefront of our hearts, no matter where we are right now in life. Huh? You know, we, had, we were under Apostle and uh, one of the churches we were in, and it was kind of warm like this on certain times. He would told us to have mind over matter. And you know what? As a spiritual person, you need to learn to have mind over matter, no matter what the atmosphere is. Yes, it is a little heated in here. But guess what? The word of the Lord is even hotter. And I'm going to make sure I suppress the the elements of the heat and rise my temperature up in the spirit so I can receive what the Lord has given to me. Amen? Amen. Yeah, there's some truth into that. There's some truth into that. Can you imagine back in the Bible day when uh, they were out in the heat and they were in the desert? Huh? Huh? And Jesus was out there ministering to them. Do you think anybody complained about how hot it was? They air conditioner wasn't even exist. They didn't even exist. But they got into the word of God and received. Amen? But today, we're going to talk about strength. And Joseph, we know the story about Joseph, right? One thing I love about Joseph, and I studied about Joseph is, I believe he's one of the most talked about people in the Old Testament. There are 12 chapters around just Joseph's life alone. 12 chapters that I counted. Give a few, take a few. 12 chapters. Why is that so important to us? Because we know that Joseph was a dreamer, right? Huh? God gave him great vision, great dreams. And man, we were taught this morning, he bragged about that thing, didn't he? He boasted about that thing, didn't he? And that was okay. But what happens when you have received the dream and you were thrown in the pit? And many of you have been thrown into the pit of your life, amen, and you have not been able to recover from that pit experience. 
Why? Because you are still dwelling on that hurt, that past, that disappointment, that failure, that setback, what somebody said to me, huh? And you are still in that pit. But we had to have a mannerism like what Joseph had. I did not read anywhere in those 12 chapters where Joseph ever mumbled and complained. And y'all know Joseph went through some hellish stuff. He went through from trial, from trial, from test to test to test. And he not, did not mumble and complain not one particular time. Because there was a strength on the inside of him that he drew from that kept him in a posture of, I'm going to trust God no matter where I am. We were, we were taught last week that Old Testament faith is trust. New Testament uh, trust is faith. Amen. But Joseph had an element of trust that I have never seen, of, of trust and strength that I've never seen before. But guess what? It's on the inside of us. We got to draw it out. Wherever we are in life, we got to draw on that strength that the Holy Ghost has on the inside of us and put on the inside of us. It says the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. My strength. And I got to draw on that strength. And what is that strength? That strength of joy when things in my life does not seem to be pleasurable at this very moment. If he tells me in the word that joy gives me strength, but not just joy, but joy in him. And Joseph exemplified that joy that was on the, on the inside of him. Why we can boldly say that? Because it did not pin that he mumbled and complained where he was. He did not mumble and complain, not where I read. He went through the process. He went through the process. There was a, something I want to point out that Apostle T also said concerning that. He said, I do not write my own faith plans. Do you remember that? Joseph did not write his own faith plan. He was a good kid, favored, highly favored by his father, and obviously highly favored by the Lord because when he was put in prison, amen, when he was held captive in Egypt, he prospered at everything that he put his hands to. And Potiphar knew that he was what? Favored by God. That the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Huh? Amen. And when you walk in that type of mannerism, when you walk in that type of posture, when you know going in the gate that the favor is God is on me. He showed me that even when I dreamed when I was 17 years old, that he was with me. That he favored me. And I believe Joseph took that same spirit all the way through his process. All the way through his process. All the way through his process. Even when disappointment came, when he helped the cupbearer, when he helped those guys interpret their dream, and he told them, look at here, when you get out, please speak to him about me. And he didn't. Because he went through the process that he had to go through. Amen? And there's a process that each and every one of us have to go through in life. Whether we like it or not. But it always has its purpose and its plan in God's eye. There's a reason why you are here. But the reason why you are here because you need to scratch your faith. You need to use your faith. Huh? You need to put some heat on your faith. Huh? You need to boost up that measure of faith that God already gave you Amen. at salvation. Stir it up. Use it. It's on the inside of you. But we want to talk about strength today. Strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. We also were told in a lesson that we had gotten from our apostle is, I grow in strength because I what? Know God. Do you remember that? I grow in what? Strength. 
because I know God. No matter where you are in your life, you get strength because you what? I know God in this situation. I know he's going to bring me out. I know he's going to bring me through. It doesn't matter how hot the fire is. God is in here with me. I know that about him. So I don't have anything to fear about, to worry about, to fret about. I know he is with me. Those three Hebrew boys, they did not fret or fear. Even if we perish, God still is going to get the glory in my life. That's the same mannerism that Joseph had. No matter what situation you put me in, whatever place you put me in, I still know that God got me even through this. Yes, in the very beginning of life, we have these great dreams, with great visions of things that God told us we're going to do and what we're going to become. We learned, I learned yesterday in a class, you know, you have your birth date, right? My birthday is January 15, 1967. And then there's a dash. And then after the dash is normally your what? Death date, Right? But what are we doing at the dash? What are we doing in between the dash? What are we doing between the vision and the word that we got from the Lord that we're going to be a millionaire, that we're going to be great, our name is going to be made great, we're going to prosper, we're going to have this, we're going to obtain that, we're going to get your driver's license, you're going to get your house, you're going to get this paid, you're going to get out of debt, your marriage is going to be restored, da 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 on and on and on. What are you doing in between that dash? That's that process that you are going, that's the work and the things that we are doing on the earth until that death day. So what are you doing? How are you maximizing your time and giving God glory at that dash point of your life? Joseph occupied and he took advantage of every opportunity, whether it seemed to be favorable to him or not. His position and his posture and and his strength in knowing God caused him to be the head of every situation. I don't know about you, but there's a scripture in Deuteronomy that says that I'm the what? Head and not the what? Tail. And Joseph took that in every situation. I'm the head. And he exemplified that because Potiphar, uh, uh, Pharaoh, caused him to be the head even in prison. So even in your prison, in your pit situation, are you still the head? Are you still prospering? Are you still on top? Are you still being elevated and promoted even in your captive situation right now? Yeah, your bank account don't look good. Yeah, your situation don't look good. But where's your captivity? And most of us, your captivity is right here in your mind. But what does the scripture in Corinthians tell us to do? Cast down every thought and high thing that exalts itself against the knowing of God. And I'm sure Joseph took that posture because I'm sure some thoughts may have come. Come on, because we are, we are what? We are mortal, right? We're not immortal. We are human, right? And we got emotions and things that may try to come up in our situations, but we have the authority to cast that thing down and not focus on that thing and let the high thoughts of God become the head of that present situation that I'm in. There's many areas in my life that I have gone through and presently in that God has showed me that you have been strong. Strong in and have stood in. And my mom's cherishing me all the time. You've been strong and independent all of your life. So that's like I take out of, of, I adopted that as a Joseph strength. A Joseph anointing that's on the inside of me. Amen? No matter what situation that I'm in, I can stand strong in that thing. But I'm standing strong, what? In the Lord, in the power of his might. And that's how we get behooved. That's how we get out of sync 
with the plan of God for our life because we, 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 we look at here in our situation. You draw on the strength of the Lord wherever you are. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. You pull on that. And I pulled on that. Even when areas I was weak in my life in relationships, come on, I pulled on the strength of the Lord to navigate me through that particular relationship. I didn't have anybody else. I had to pull on the strength that was on the inside of me. Come on, I had three children, no husband. I had nobody I can rely on other than the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But there was a strength on the inside of me that I was able to draw on that kept me sound. That kept me sound as a single mother. That kept me sound. Huh? Leaving the home at 18, it kept me sound even though I was in a situation that was rough, that was not favorable to me. But I know God was with me. Because what he showed me when I was a little girl, what I was going to be, what I was going to become. Huh? So I stood on that strength and did not murmur and complain about where I was. Even though your life, you may experience some wilderness times. And we all do. But we've been taught in this house that I'm supposed to have a what in the wilderness? If you know your Bible, it tells you you're supposed to have a feast in the wilderness. In other words, I'm having joy. I'm having peace. I'm still prosperous. I'm still the head and not the tail. I'm still on top. I am according to what I say I am. And I become what I tell myself I'm going to become. But I have to say that. To me, to me. You know, I don't do a lot of weights. I don't like to exercise. But Maurice and my husband and many other people in here that love that element, they talk about the core, right? They talk about the core. And the Holy Spirit gave me this picture about the core one morning coming to women's, women's meeting. And he told me to talk about core and strength and endurance and not letting our emotions take control of where we are. And we have a habit of letting our emotions speak louder than the word of God in our lives. Joseph did not let his emotions speak louder than what he knew his God was. I really believe that. I really believe that. And when you have grown and you know no matter how heated your situation is, your posture is going to stay in that place of joy, peace. Eric, Elder Caroline Carr broke down on the way of a great family reunion. Huh? Her element said, curse the car, come on, complain about the car. But she chose to pull on the strength of what she's been taught. That's a material thing. It can be fixed. I'm going to stay into my core value, which is the fruit of the spirit. I'm going to stay in a place of joy and a stay in a place of self-control. Huh? And that caused her situation to turn around and, 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 and give her favor and to give her grace because of the strength she decided to draw out of her. Amen? But what I want to show you about this diagram that the Holy Spirit gave me was, this is your core. And who is in our core? The Holy Ghost is on the inside of me. He's in your core. Out of your belly shall flow. Everything that the Holy Ghost gives you, right? Because remember, he, how he knows all things, and he brings all things to your remembrance. And you can go inside of your core and draw out anything you need, anytime you need it, in any situation that you find yourself in. 
is on the inside. Your answer is at the core, which is the house of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And not just the Holy Ghost, but the whole heavenly host. God, Trinity, all of it is on the inside of you. So we have no reason or excuse to wallow at the pool. Our apostle talks about that all the time. We say wallowing at a pool. Guess what? That pool has been there for many, many years. Ain't going nowhere. There's only one person can change that pool situation, and that is you. Whether you choose to stay at it or where you choose to move your position of it. And, and, and that's talking about a spiritual mindset. You got to shift your mind of how it thinks of where you are. You got to tell this mind, no, we're not going that, that, this way. Because I have the mind of what? Christ. And I think like what? He thinks. And when my thinking is low, I still draw on his strength because his thoughts are not like what? And they are higher than what? Mine. So when I am weak in an area, I begin to draw on his thoughts. How do I draw on his thoughts? Through this word right here. If I want to begin to think on the level that he's thinking, I get in this word right here. So my mind can be what? Transformed. And when my mind is transformed and my thoughts are on the level where he's thinking of my life right now, that's when renewal takes place. Renewal in your mind. Renewal of how you see the situation that you are in right now. But you have a core. You have, a whole, you have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. And guess what? That core is where you draw your strength from. It's where you draw your endurance from. It's where it's the center. It's the center. There's a song that Israel who uh, sang what said, you are the center of my what? There's a song life and there's a song of joy. You are the center of my joy. But I got to go to the center. I got to go to the core. I got to go to where my strength comes from. And my strength comes from who? The Lord. And nothing else. I cannot depend on anything else. I have to draw from my core. Because out of my belly, out of my core flows what? Life. And when I draw from that well of life, I speak life on my situation. It has to change. And it has to change what? Immediately. Because the word of God is what? Quick, powerful, and sharper than any what? But I got to first use the word in order for it to be quick. And in order to, for it to be powerful. So walking in doom and gloom is not accepted in the spirit of God. It's not accepted in the heavenlies. Because he said he give you joy for your what? Morning. Then he tells you that joy comes in the what? Morning. It comes, but you got to stay in that place of joy, peace, happiness. The fruit of the spirit, that fruit of the spirit, it what protect your core. It what protects what goes into your core. And the core also, I believe, can be your soul. Left. No, 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 it cannot be. This is your soul realm right here. This is your soul realm right here. And your soul realm is where your, your, your debt is, is where your emotions are, is where your crisis is. Is where your circumstance is, is where your fear is, is where your lack is, is where your divorce is, is where your bad relationship is, is where all of that is, and it's speaking so loud around you. Very loud. I'm never going to come out. I'm never going to get out of this pit. I'm never going to get out of this situation. But if you read Joseph's story, he got out of the pit. He came out of the pit. God always draws us out of the pit. Even if it looks like we're going into captivity, we're still coming out of the pit. And it's amazing how God uses captive moments to bring him glory and to bring you advancement and increase 
and elevation if you go through it the proper way. If you go through it the proper way. Every process, every experience is necessary. He said it all works out for your what? But you got to go through it the way he has planned for you to go through it. I promise you. It ain't the enemy. It's God that's causing you to go this way. When he brought them out of captivity, he, he said it was an 11-day journey, but he took them this way because they weren't ready to fight. Is it the reason why you're in the situation you are for so long that it's been because you're still not ready to fight? You're still not ready to use that faith word that you have gotten? Are you still not ready to use the work, do the work? Are you still in an area where you're not willing to work the faith tool that you have? Is why you're going around this situation over and over and over and over? So are you going through this process because you ain't ready to get over here yet? Because you're not drawing on the strength of the Lord. You're not walking in the element of faith that he's given you, given us. We're not working the faith. We're taught in our faith Fridays, well, hey, if, we, if you ain't working faith, it's just dead. It's just a word. It's just a word. And one thing about it, when God has given us something or he's given us a tool, we're working for a little while. But when it's not moving fast enough, we'll put it down and say, this must not be God. But we're not willing to walk out the full plan and the full process and knock on doors, huh? Until he shifts or until you get your answer. So we'll give up halfway. Joseph could not give up halfway. Because he, he was kept in, in, a, in, a, in a place for a minute, and God made sure he stayed in that place for a minute. How we know that is true, because when his brothers found him, and they was like, oh God, forgive us, brother, forgive us. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> this was God doing. He didn't have nothing to do about you. When can you be that strong when you're in the situation that you're in and say, this ain't got nothing to do with my bills. This ain't got nothing to do with what I'm going through. This ain't got nothing to do with my marriage, my finances, my bills. ain't got nothing to do about that. This is all about for God to get glory and for me to dive into this thing and bear fruit. Joseph bore fruit. That the Potiphar, that, that Potiphar and Pharaoh put him over their stuff to the point where they didn't even worry about their stuff anymore. They trusted him with the keys of their kingdom. Well, all they did was ate at the table every day, had parties every day. When are we going to get to that place where we can allow God to go chill out? Huh? Why Jesus got to be in intercession all the time for us all the time? When, he, when can he peacefully sit at the right hand of the Father for real? Instead of looking down here and blah, 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 kata for us all the time. You know what he said? He, he's there to make intercession for us. But Holy Ghost has given us the way. He's given us the plan. All we got to do is work it and let them have a feast sometime. Let God have a feast. Let Holy Ghost have a feast. Let Jesus have a feast. And let us do what we're supposed to do here in the earth realm. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, they working overtime. Do you get it? Do you have it now? Do you get it now? Do you see what I'm talking about now? Can you hear you ready to move now? Are you tired of this right now? Huh? Yeah. They, I think they getting tired. How do I know they're getting tired? Because God say, I'm weary that I created these people. I never want God to say that about me. I am so tired of Nina. I'm so weary about her not coming out, not getting it. So I'm just going to shove her over because I'm, I'm tired of, but that's not how his grace and favor work over us. But it depends on my strength. 
It depends on what's on, how I use what's on the inside of me. I got to use what's on the inside of me. And there's some good stuff on the inside of us. And it's called the Holy Ghost, who knows all things. Hmm? When I don't know it, I can tap into him and he'll tell me. Yeah. He will. He will. But there's a strength on the inside of us that we need to tap into like never before and get on through to the prosperity place. I'm talking about in the natural realm because you got to understand you were already, you already prosperous right now in your debt, in your lack. You already prosperous right now. We're being taught that now faith is. So I ain't waiting to get prosperous. I'm not waiting to get my house. I'm not waiting till things get in order. No, I already have it now. And once our partial begin to, 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 to line up with the now element of it, I believe things in our life will move a little quicker. Because the word is what? Quick, sharper. Quick, sharper. And then he tells us in that same, in, 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 in Isaiah, what our apostle teaches us, that he also gives you a quick what? Understanding. When you don't understand where you are right now, tap into the Holy Ghost. He will tell you why. Because you won't listen to me. Because you won't move in faith. That's why. Because you won't take the word that you heard and work it. That's why. He's not going to take the blame of any situation that we're in right now. Mm -mm. Because he's already given you the prosperous plan. He's already given you the way. He's the truth, the way, and the what? He's already given you all of that. We got to walk it. We got to work it. I believe Joseph walked it and he worked it to the point where even in temptation, even when he's being tempted by the, by, the, uh, by the man's wife, he endured and he pulled on the core value that's on the inside of him. No, I'm not yielding to that. I flee that. That's a place of maturity. And a place of development on the inside of you where you don't let little tinkering toys excite you and move you. Huh? Because look at here. I already know from the beginning I'm better than that. When I was in my situation before, I met my husband. Going around, I mean, the mountain. Knowing the relationship is not favorable for me. Knowing it's not. But I had to get to the point where, look at him, I'm better than this. I'm better than this. And that's when I begin to come out. Because I begin to do what the Holy Ghost was telling me to do to get out of that particular relationship. I had to work it. When are you going to tell your situation? No, 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 no. I'm better than this. I'm better than this. And I'm going to use my faith and I'm going to come out of this situation. I'm going to come out of it. Another tool we got in my notes, I have strength to over, overcome because I know God. That was one of my notes that apostle gave us. I overcome because I know God. Joseph overcame because what? He knew God. Are you not overcoming in that area because you don't know God in that area? And guess it's okay because, see, he moves in, in those ways sometimes where he wants you to seek him in a new realm. He said what? Follow the priest, follow the Holy Ghost because you've never been this way before. So there's some areas in our life we've never been before. Why? Because he wants us to seek him and follow him so we can know him in another way. Know him in another way. And when you do that, he's giving you more strength in that area. Because you're drawing from his strength to your, your, to your life. I want you to go to this particular strip, um, scripture. Psalms 84 and 7. Psalms 84 and 7. Psalms 84 and 7. We're going to parallel some things here. Who 
ever have it, read it. 84 and 7. Psalms 84 and 7. I know what it says, but I want you to see it. I want to read it to you from the KJV. Somebody else says something? Go ahead. Read it for me. That's what I want. How are you appearing before God? I should be, uh, I thank you. We should be appearing before him, what? Strong. We're also being taught in this house that those that do exploits, they are what? Strong. Those that are strong do great what? Exploits. Strong. Strength. But this is how we move. This is how Joseph moved. This is how our life moved. I like how the Amplified says it. It parallels the same as the KJV. It says, they go from what? Strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. Every one of us goes from strength to strength. How do you work your strength where you are right now? How are you working the plan that God has given you right now? You're developing your strength muscles. And then when you work that strength, guess where he takes you to? The next area of strength. Whether it's a trial, whether it's a tribulation, that's what happened with Joseph. He went from strength to strength. In other words, it was trial to trial. Circumstance to situation. It was. But in everything, he got another piece of tool that he needed for his life. And every last one of them was promotion. <laughs> Everyone was promotion. Because he did not grumble and complain about where he was in. He never even questioned God of why he was even there. That's an element of faith and trust when you know your God. If I got to go through this, I'm going to go through it because I know you're in here with me. I know you're navigating me. There's a reason why I'm here. Because I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle yet. And you're giving me on this journey right here. Because all you're doing is moving me from strength to strength. My husband can say that, we, we can say that a lot with our businesses, okay? We have seen levels where there was de dis uh, decrease, prosperity, back to decrease, back for just enough, back to not enough. But in every, every circumstance, we got better and we got stronger and we did things differently than what we did last time. He has to take us that way because we got to be able to maintain the billionaire status we're going to get to. Joseph had to go through that particular thing because after a while, he ruled Pharaoh's kingdom. The king. But he had to go through some things in order to get to that status where he can really operate the entire kingdom. So there were certain keys he got along the way. But when he got to the point where he was able to rule pharaohs, the entire kingdom, not just departments, <laughs> huh? When are we going to get to the place where we truly trust God and believe him with every fiber of our being, no matter where we are, man, knowing that I'm going to get to that place that he showed me in my dream? And that's the part between the dash we fumble at because we look at it and we think that I've messed up, I failed. It's a setback. No, it's not. Look at it in a different mindset. I'm here for a reason because God wants me to get something. He's, he's grinding something on the, on the inside of me. That's why I'm back here. And not because I necessarily failed. No, I got I to gotta just repeat it. I got to repeat it. And then if you did fail, okay, let's say you did fail at it. Yeah, you truly messed it up when Holy Ghost told you to go right and you went left. Okay, okay. But his grace and mercy is there, guess what? They come and help you pass the test again. But we can't stay in the pit. We cannot stay there. We got to keep moving, going from what? Strength to strength. Because I promise you, every situation, he's building 
strength muscles so at the end of the day you can be like we tell God that God is flexing but don't you want to flex with him he's building your strength muscles so you can begin to flex in God that's what he wants you to do and guess what I even believe you can even flex even within yourself because why because you are bearing fruit and you're seeing the fruit in your life because you've gone through the process Without grumbling and complaining. No, I don't quite understand it, but God, you with me anyhow. Huh? Just don't take your spirit away from me, David said. Yeah. Yeah, I messed up. Yes, I did. I showed up there. But God, God, come on, stay with me. Give me another opportunity. Huh, huh, huh? Keep moving. Faith is moving. Strength to strength. Strength to strength. Strength to strength. He's building us, y'all. He's building us, y'all. Go to Romans 1 and 17. Romans 1 and 17. There's another two words we hear a lot, we say it a lot, but it's a movement, it's a progression process of our life that that every one of us go through. He says what? Uh, Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Your righteousness is veiled when you move from what? That too is a process. That too is seasons of your life. That too is seed. That too is the word that has been sown in your heart. What are you doing with in, in between the two? With the two. The Bible says we're moving from what? Faith to faith. And my righteousness, how I'm moving, how I'm growing, how I'm developing is in that too. How I'm growing, moving, believing God, trusting God causes me to go to that next faith. From faith to faith. Our life is always progressing. He, he, his intentions is for us to move from faith to faith. And what was that other two words we had earlier? Strength to strength. So we're learning strength to strength I have to use. The strength that's on the inside of me. Strength to endure. Because endurance brings perseverance and it brings what? Patience. And it brings virtue. That's what it's bringing. That's what it's building in you. And patience is one of those fruit of the spirit that's on the inside of you that you got to draw from. If it's peace you need, draw from it. It's in your core. If it's more temperance and self-control you need, it's in there. Draw from it. And not let your situation cause you to move in that soulish realm when pulled from what's on the inside of you. And it's going to help you overcome. Why? Because I know God is a God of of, of peace. Because he said, peace I've given you. So guess what? In this situation, it does not seem peaceful, but I'm going to draw from peace. And I'm going to tell peace to do what? I'm not going to fret and get frantic. I'm going to stay in peace in this situation. Why? Because I know God is with me. Because he said peace he's given me. Peace he's left with me. So in this area of my life, this is what I'm going to draw from. And it's in my core. It's on the inside of me. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. We need to use it more. Depend on it more. And not depend on the soulish realm. That's why we live a defeated life. Because we stay in that outer realm when I need to stay with what's on the, in, in my core. Because it's already in there. I'm built with it. I was born with it. But I just got to develop it and use it. Hmm? Peace is going to stay weak if I don't use it. Joy is going to stay weak if I, don't use, if I don't use it. Gentleness is going to stay weak until I use it.
I got to use it. Let's go to 2 uh, Corinthians 3 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. Another two words that go together. And it says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from what? From glory to glory. That's the process. So we need to stop being in such a hurry to get to that place of greatness. That's already promised me. But there's some building that God is doing in between me getting to that promised place. Because I'm moving from what? What was the first two we got? Strength to strength. And then in that same movement, I'm also moving from what? Faith to faith. And in that same movement, I'm also moving from what? Glory to glory. Because God is revealing himself to me in those areas, in my process. He's revealing himself to me, to you. But we're looking at it as I'm in the pit. I'm defeated. I'm in this bad situation. I'm never going to come out. No, 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 no. Wrong eyesight. Looking at the wrong thing. Looking at the wrong thing. Even when them boys did not uh, tell Joseph, tell Potiphar that Joseph, uh, the one interpreted the dream. He wasn't moved by it. He waited his time. His process was different from their process. And that's one other thing that trips us up. We look at how somebody else's testimony was, and we think I was supposed to be the same way. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. God may be building you a different way, but using their testimony to help you continue to move from strength to strength, faith to faith, glory to glory. Because if he did it for them, he's going to do it for me. But I got to stay and in, in, in work my strength in strength, my faith in faith, and my glory in glory, and not get jealous of somebody else's dreams. Because I got dreams too. And I got to go through the process that I got to go through to get my dreams developed. We all have dreams. But what are you doing to make sure those dreams come to pass? You play a vital part. We play a vital part. And those dreams come in the past. They not going to just come out the sky. They just not going to drop out the sky. Faith without what? Is dead. And that's why your life is dead. That's why your life is desolate. That's why you're in an area where you feel like you're stuck. You're not moving. Because you're not pulling on that core value on the inside of you that said, no, 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 I move from strength to strength. I don't feel like going to the bank. I don't feel like filling out the application. I don't feel like doing the, da, uh, 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 uh. I got to draw on the strength from me on the inside of me and go do the work that he's telling me to do in order to obtain the thing that I'm believing him for. So that's the area where I got to pull on some strength. I got to get out the bed. I got to get moving to get some things done. So I can make sure my promise come to pass. It's already promised to me. But I got to do the work to make sure that I get to that place of promise. And that's where we fail. That's where we trip at. And that's where we stop moving from strength to strength, faith to faith, and glory to glory. Let's stop being in a hurry. And you know what? And I believe when we stop being in such a hurry to get over there to that promised place, we can, not, we can have less hiccups, less mistakes. We can hear God strategically. Apostle teaches us, be careful how you hear. When we're not so quick to move, like Elder Caroline said uh, Friday night concerning a situation that she was in financially, and she wanted to do one thing, a thought was coming, but she had in her spirit to wait. Be, stay in peace in this situation. And it worked out without having to give up something that she really, really loved. So under pressure, you got to learn 
to have peace and wait. That way you won't make a mistake. You won't mess up. Chill out. Joseph stayed in a place where he chilled out. He chilled out. Yep, I'm here, but I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to clean these jail floors so good, man, please. Yep. Yep. Paul and Silas in prison. What did they do in prison? They were singing praises to God. And what happened next? The doors flung open, supernatural. So in other words, there's a supernatural strength on the inside of you, and it's called the glory of God that he wants to reveal in your life. He just wants to get glory where you are. That's all he wants. And then he wants you to get some glory. How do you get glory? Because people look on your life and see how you came through that situation, and they draw from the glory cloud that you have around you. They made it, I can make it. They're pulling from your glory. They're drawing from your light. And that's what we don't like. And that's why we get frustrated and aggravated in the process. Because our attitudes are in the wrong position. Our attitudes are on top. And not the spirit of God and the word of God being on top. Our Bible tells us we always on top. He's told us that in Genesis 1 and 27. From day one, he told you, you're going to have dominion. You're going to subdue. From day one, that was the mandate for our life. Day one. And it's still that way now. It's still that way now. So begin to transform your mind and transform your, your position of, of, of thinking and, and, and your eyesight. And begin to look at your situation totally different. Take a Joseph stance. Pull on that Joseph anointing. Where even when trial and tribulations came, he did not falter. He did not trip out. He did not fret. He did not go and do something foolish and stupid. He stayed with God. It doesn't spell out in the scripture where how he developed his relationship with God. It don't. It just started out where he had a dream and he was daddy's favorite. Hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you today that you are daddy's favorite. And there's a coat of many colors that you have on you. Because he's clothed you with righteousness, with a new garment. Amen. He's taken that filthy garment off of you and you're clothed with a colorful coat. Huh? And what is that colorful coat? The fruit of the spirit. Joy, peace, love, gentleness, long-suffering, huh? self-control, that's your coat. That's your coat of many colors. How are you wearing it? How are you wearing it? Are you letting your grumbling and complaining get it stripped off of you? Your, your, your pride causing it to be stripped off of you. You are God's favorite. You are the apple of his eye. He has the best intentions for you. Yes, he does right now, right now. Even in your bad situation. Why I'm saying it's bad because of how y'all came in here this morning. Your situation must be real bad. I mean, y'all must be going through. But it tells me that y'all ain't going through properly. Because the thing is, through, through, you're going to get on the other side, but you're going to depend on how hurry you go, how fast you're going to get over there, though. I want to be like Peter. I want to get over there, there real quick. I want to step out the boat and begin to work my faith. I want to walk on some water because this boat here is tolling and tolling and tossing. Yeah, I want to get out and walk on this thing. So when are we going to get out of the boat of toiling and tossing and striving and working and being in a place of I'm not peaceful, I'm not joyful, I don't like where that is, and begin to walk on water and tell the storm to chill out and walk in your area of peace, of knowing who you are and what you have possession of right now. Because that's what faith is. I'm rich right now. I'm out of debt right now. I'm living in my mansion right now. I got several acres right now. 
right now. My bank account is full right now. I'm already a billionaire right now. I'm just in the, in the dash. <laughs> I'm just in the dash. But I'm, I'm not going to leave this earth at a death date with y'all not remembering the goodness and the good and the legacy that we have left here. Y'all ain't going to say to me, well, you know they were going through. Every time I look around, they was going through. Y'all not going to say that at our funeral. No, y'all going to say they fought the good fight of faith. Huh? They won the prize. They pressed towards the mark. They obtained the precious promises. That's what they did. Yeah, they believed God. They lived in it. They dreamed. They drove it. They ate it. They wore it. Huh? Yeah, there wasn't no fig tree. They did it. They worked the walk of faith. That's what you're going to say about your leaders here. So we all are in a process. We all are getting to that place of promise. But where is your attitude? What strength are you drawing from? What faith are you working? What glory are you... (laughs) I don't know what glory you own. It ain't God's glory. Because if it was God's glory, with all them problems that y'all facing, y'all would have tripped up in here. Man, y'all would have kicked them heels off. And when praise and worship was going on, boy, y'all would have ran with the heat off, with the air not working, whatever. Y'all would have still ran around this place. Oh, my God. Because I got the victory. I've overcome. I am an overcomer. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So there is an image and there's a transformation that God is doing in our life. He's doing it, but we got to allow him to do it. Joseph allowed him to do it. Joseph did not get in the way. I did not read it. Joseph did not get in the way. His situation seemed not to be favorable to him, but he did not get in the way. He trusted God through the entire process. Yes, he did. But he prospered every step of the way. He won every step of the way. He overcame came every step of the way. Grace of favor was on him every step of the way. You got to know and settle in your heart That what you are in right now, grace and favor is on you right now. This situation is favorable for you. Because guess what? When you, when you, when you listen to the Holy Ghost this time and you begin to do what he's telling you to do this time, oh, you're going to do it quickly. Huh? And you're not going to get in your own way. You got to go around this situation all over again. He's doing things quickly. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. So based on the notes that I have from our apostles and based on Joseph, there are so many elements of Job and facets of Joseph. We've taught Joseph in the booze class. We've taught Joseph in women's ministry. Joseph can really teach you how to walk this walk of life successfully and prosperous. He can. So there's, there's one, two, three, four, five things I want to leave you with that you should already have in your notes that we've been taught on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock and Tuesday Bible study. Number one is I grow in strength because I know God. We're talking about strength today, the strength that's on the inside of you. I grow in strength because I know God. I know God, and I know he's with me. Number two, I have strength to overcome because I know God. That's how, I, that's how I can claim I'm an overcomer right now. Yeah, because I know God. I overcome right now in this situation. Yeah, I don't like it. It ain't favorable. But I've already overcome this right here. Why? Because I know God. Joseph did that. Joseph said that. It's evident that this posture was like that. Number three, I do not write my own faith plan. That's why we're being taught in this house, you better get a relationship with Holy Ghost. You better know his voice and how he speaks to you. He has the plan. On your birthday, while you was in your mother's womb, he had your plan. 
huh? At day of conception, he had your plan already ready for you. So why are we trying to make our own plan? Number four, God has placed us on a timeline. Do you remember that, that, that note? God has placed you on a timeline. I believe Joseph was on a timeline. You know why? He had to be put in the pit. He had to be sold to the Egyptians. He had to go through all them places to get at the place of kingship so when his family came, when time of famine came, he would be in position. So are you going to be in position for your family, for your grandchildren? So there was a timeline there for Joseph. And he was right at the right place at the right time because he went through his process. He was right in the right position at the right time when famine came. And he was able to save an entire kingdom. Number four, number five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going home. God is concerned about your timeline. He's concerned about it. But my Bible says he perfects everything that concerns you. He perfects everything that concerns me. But I got to stay on his timeline and not mine. I got to stay with his plan and not my plan. Because man makes many plans, but it's the God, the one that is going to bring his plan, his plans. He said we are here for his good pleasure. <laughs> yeah, we're here for his will. He, we're here because he wants us to be here. Not because we want to be here. We're here because he wants us to be here so he can get pleasure out of our lives. That's what he wants from us. Amen. Are we at a better place than we came this morning? I hope so. I pray so. I pray so. That you've gotten something. Just stand up on your feet. That you've gotten something out of the message this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I pray your mindset is at a better place than it was when you came in this morning. Apostle T, I hate I had to teach on this kind of ground, but I, I believe Holy Ghost did what he needed to do. This morning, you know, I want to come up here and teach at 11 o'clock like a pastor. Come up here, y'all hyped and excited and ready to go. I had to plow through. Still, still like I'm plowing through. Glory to God. But nevertheless, it's not my will but God's will. And I believe his will was done and you got what you needed today from the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know I did for me. I know I did for me. Amen. Because there are some plans and some things and dreams that God is beginning to fulfill on, in, in my life right now. Some things he showed me as a little girl is coming to fruition now. Amen. But I believe it was contingent on what I did during my rest, what I thought was a wilderness time. When I needed to take it, that time as a time of rest, of, of trust. A whole lot was going on right there between that dash right there in my life. There's many dashes I believe we have in our lives. <laughs> many dashes. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do at that two? And that two is that dash. And I'm believing from this day forward, we're going we're gonna to occupy. We're going to do what we're supposed to do righteously. That's going to give God pleasure in our lives. Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this word from today. We know, Father God, that you have sowed on good ground this morning. And not an evil one is going to come and pluck the seed of the word that has been sown out of our hearts. That we're going to marinate on the word that we've received from you this morning, Father. That word was very rich to our very soul. That is going to cause our spirit to begin to reign again like it should anyway, Lord God. But we are learning, Father God, even through the processes of our life, that you are with us always, always in the fire, 
in the furnace of affliction. There's a reason why you sent us through the furnace of affliction. It is to settle us, to establish us, to build us, to increase us, to strengthen us, Father. So, Father, we won't be in a hurry with your building process, Father, because we know even in the building process, we are prosperous now. We've won now. We've overcome now. We at that promise now, even in the dash, even in the between time, even in the two time, Father. So for, from this day forth, Father, we move from strength to strength, faith to faith, and glory to glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Be blessed. Amen, 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 amen.